Hello drone racers, I got a brand new LiPo charger and I was really excited because now I can charge two batteries at once without having to parallel charge two different chargers. But I found my little 5 amp power supply could not keep up. Every time I would try and charge a second battery, it would all reset and it would all fail. So I needed more power. I started my search and found several options that people use for LED power supplies and other things that you can get pretty cheap and wire up, but I didn't like the exposed wires on that. So on further research, I discovered this. There are a lot of posts about this online and several videos about it, but I'm gonna go through the process of making one into a bench power supply for you today. This is an HP server power supply, and there are several of them that are available that will work. In this case, I'm using a model ATSN71044. More commonly, you'll find the DPS 800 GB. So that means it's an 800 watt power supply. That is huge. At 12 volts, that's about 65 amps, way more than you need. This is a hot swap power supply that just comes with a blade that's designed to slide into the back of a server and it provides 12 volts along with 5 volts and 3.3 volts if you need it. But I'm mainly concerned about 12 volts. People do wire these up in series and get 24 volts out of them also, but for now I need several 12 volt power supplies. I want one for this bench, I want one in my to-go kit, and I want one on my garage bench where I do most of my battery charging. So it's a pretty easy process and I've got one that I've been using here, I want to make sure it worked first. All you have to do is solder two wires onto the board and then I connected banana plugs. So these are nice because if I want screw terminals, I can unscrew them and then I have a port available. But most of the time I use the banana plug and just plug straight in. And I have enough of them that I can power multiple chargers at the same time. And this thing has plenty of juice to power pretty much as much as you need to. Several chargers, no problem. So I'll actually use multiple chargers all at the same time. Now that I have this working, there will be a review of this coming soon because it's really sweet. So I want to give full credit. I didn't create this process. I didn't figure this out. Uh, there's mainly an RC Group's thread where people figure this out over several years with different types of power supplies. So just so you know, this uses a standard computer power cord. So you probably have several of these lying around, at least I did. And what happens is when you plug this in, nothing you get absolutely nothing. It doesn't do anything or won't turn on. So you have to wire up some wires to tell it to power itself on. To do that, you do two things. One, you have to connect this second terminal here to the second terminal on the bottom. So we'll do that first. And then second, we connect the third terminal to the positive output here. And I believe that's used for reading the voltage. I've got an old JST wire here that I've been using for the connections. The colors don't matter. So this is a 22 gauge wire. You don't need much. It doesn't have to be a big wire for these connections because there's not really power going through there, not much. Just enough to keep it signaled. I'm not having any problem with these wires in place there. So I'm gonna take the rest of this wire and cut it off here to start with. And I'm gonna strip one end. You definitely want wire strippers for this and with 22 gauge it's pretty easy. Don't need much wire, give it a twist. And then I need to figure out how long this needs to be. I don't want it too short, but I don't want it too long. So I want to be able to wrap it around and I don't want it to be hanging out. That's, see that is hanging out way too far. So I'm gonna take about half of this and cut it off and then strip the other side. So now, after I solder one side, I'll be able to wrap this around and connect it to the bottom. So there's one wire. I don't think my black here is quite long enough to go from there to there. It would be, but it'd be a straight shot. And I just don't really want to do that. I kind of want to hide it a little more. So I'm going to use the blue in this case. There now, this is actually on the bottom, so it's not here. But that will let me go from solder to here. I tuck it back a little bit and connect it there. So I'm going to shorten this just a little more and then strip both sides. This side on my wire is pre-tinned, but I'm actually gonna take off a little more than that. So my typical bench is not heat proof, so I have a ceramic tile that I put it on here just to keep from burning up my uh, bench. So I'm gonna pre-tin these connections, which means I'm just gonna heat this up a little bit and it does not take much at all on these pads. So I actually got a little glob of solder on there. I think if I just put it on here, it'll go and it'll stick. And that's all I have to do. And that will tin that side. I'll do the same thing to the other side. Actually, don't know if it's called tinning when you're connecting pads. Uh, that's what it is with wires. Do the same thing here. Getting the solder on here makes it heat up that, these are really good copper pads. Connect this on the back. There we go. And they heat up the pad and they just stick instantly. It's the easiest soldering job you've ever done connecting to this side. Okay, so I need to do the same thing to the wire. I like to get a little solder on there because it helps 
pass the heat through the wire and then put the uh, wire on top and it'll just soak through. And we just want a little solder in the connection there. I'm gonna hold the wire with the set of needle nose pliers because this short little wire is gonna heat up super fast and I don't want to burn myself at all. But we just get a good connection in there. Make sure we get a lot of pressure. And there we go. Now the important thing is make sure we don't didn't cross over and short out the terminals at all. Now on this side, what I do is I bend the wire around because see it's a nice short little clean wire. And I have a, tool, a soldering tool that I use for this to apply pressure to it. And this tool, I have no idea what it's called. Somebody can tell me, I'm sure is uh, it, it, the solder does not stick to it very well. So I will just use this to apply pressure here and get the, my solder on both. You wanna make sure you get both globs of solder uh, melted so they melt into one solid piece. And there it's one solid connection. So on the other side, this piece is long enough that I can hold on to it without a problem. I don't really need the uh, needle nose pliers, get it bent into shape. There we go, so there's one side, and I realized I didn't tin the other side here, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Just right there. This pad's bigger, so it's a little harder to get it to stick, but there, it's totally stuck. So I've got it folded in, I've got the wire hidden back underneath, got them pushed right back together. So now between the solder on the board and the solder and the wire, just get them melted. And I actually want a little more. I'm gonna hold this down with my soldering iron and I want a little more on here. I'll hold it down with that. Now I've got a good solid connection. And that big glob of solder on this side doesn't matter at all. So there we go, that's the easy part. Now that I have the wire soldered, I need to test it before I go and do any more soldering. So what I do is I have the power cord connected to a surge strip. You might call me a little paranoid, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And I have it plugged in. The surge strip is turned off because I don't want my hands on this when I first power it on. So I have it set, ready to go. Okay, now I will turn on the surge strip. We are a click, we have it powered on. We have a little light over here that you may not be able to see. So it's gonna power up now. Fan in this one, these are all pretty much used whenever you get them, so they may sound a little different, but overall it's pretty quiet for a power supply. So I'm gonna check the voltage now. We should have 12 volts right there. Okay, good, we're even over a little bit, and that's okay. I, I would rather have it be a little over. I think that bottom wire actually makes it go up a little bit higher. 12.8 volts, that's outstanding. That doesn't still mean that it's going to work because that's under no load. I've heard of some people that th at this point it works fine, but once they put a load on it, it dies. So we still have to test that, but so far so good. So now we have to get the barrel connectors on and there's two ways you can do this. And I've tried both ways. One, the easy way is just take off this first thread and I just got these off Amazon. These were super cheap ones for an eight pack. Tighten down that thread and then tin this side, get a bunch of solder on it, tin this side, press them together. I use this plate to hold it down and we'll solder it on. And that's what I'm gonna do this time because I think it's good enough. The alternative better way probably is to grind off the threads with a Dremel tool, which I did on, I did both on this. I have one side that's ground off and the one side that's just with the threads. Grind off this so then when you push it down you have a lot more metal to metal contact. And that is probably a better way because you don't have, you have a lot more metal on metal contact. And if you're pulling a lot of power through here, it probably does make a difference. With the power supplies that I'm using right now, I don't think it does, but you can choose which way you think is better. The problem is with these cheap ones, the metal on the inside is not good. And getting solder to stick to it, even with flux, was very, very difficult. And these big surfaces, it was very hard to do. So for this time, I'm gonna actually use the thread method and just gonna solder directly to the threads and directly to the board. And I think it's good enough, but you can decide for yourself which way you wanna do it for sure. 
So one of the mistakes I made the first time is I want to have these holes available. I don't know if I'll ever use them. I'll probably honestly never ever use them, but it'd be nice to have. So I wanna make sure I crimp and open that up and I'm gonna hold the clamp right in here to get my solder connected on this side. Now, I don't know, I have a pretty good Weller soldering station here. I don't know if you'll be able to do this with a cheap soldering iron, that it doesn't have enough power to get the connections in. I actually have bigger edges too that I can put on if I need to, but I try and get the solder in there so it gets in the threads to help transfer heat through and to try and get it to stick. So with enough heat in those threads, it will eventually stick. So there I'm starting to get it on the inside and there it's sticking to the copper plating on here. So there it's pretty good and I'm gonna get some more in on this side. So I accomplished what I was really after. I got solder deep into the threads. I want solder all through this. But I have it all the way across the board from the front to back and deep into the threads. So that's what I'm after. I'm gonna do the same thing now to the other three that I'm getting ready. Okay, all four of those done. Now we have to do the power supply. Now we have to look at spacing and get the solder on the board. I like to make, put this one all the way over here and this one as far over here as I can get and then try to center these two because I made a mistake on the first one I did and tried to get this one too close and I ended up shorting this with solder and I just threw it away. So now I'm gonna basically do the same procedure that I used earlier just with more solder. So I'm just gonna get a whole bunch in here. There we go. So there, now look at my spacing again. So if I go there and there, about right here. So I'll get solder, 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 on the board, on the board, on the board. Just a big glob, that, that's, all, that's all I want. That's my technical term, it's a big glob. So for spacing wise, that one will go there and that one will go right there. This is by far the easiest part. Of the whole process and it's not a hard process if you have even just a little bit if you're if you're building your own drones you can handle this without a problem at least the way i'm doing it here if if you decide you want to grind these off and you use that solder technique it is harder and takes takes some more soldering skill there we go glob of solder on now i've got my four globs of solder we just need to get them connected i'm going to take my first terminal here and i'm going to work from this side so what I wanna do is just get it all melted. So I've kinda of got my soldering iron in the middle here. So I'm gonna remelt this and remelt this and get them pressed together. Come on, might need a little more heat. Okay, so I've got both sides melted here. Get it pressed. Good and flat, and hold it as flat as I can. So that one's not too bad. It's good and flat. There's not quite as much solder as I would like on it, and my barrel connector up top that I'm probably never gonna use um, is a little crooked, but I don't care. I think that's a good connection, so let's do another one. I find it works easiest to work this direction because then it, when I can get my tool in here, which I didn't this last time, what I had to do this time was get the solder melted on the post first, and then I put that down onto the board, which was easier to get melted. And what I'm gonna do is get it pressed in here. Nope, I'm not. I'm actually glad I got one of these. There's an example of a bad connection. You see this, the, the metal on those threads is not actually touching. It's just the solder that's connected together. So that is not good enough. I'm gonna redo that because I don't, I don't find that acceptable. I don't want all the power passing through the solder. So I can actually see a gap in there. So I'm gonna take this off and do that one again. We'll say I did that on purpose just for demonstration purposes. There we go. I didn't even have to heat it. I was screwing in these terminals and this one is good and solid and this one just came off. So it was definitely not good. So there we go. I got that one redone and now it's a much better connection. I screwed that in and it was a good tight terminal connection. What I had to do was get some more solder on both sides and so it would melt together better. Got it good and heated and then pressed it firm and it went right on a nice contact to the board.
everything's on. I've got the charger connected. I have a couple batteries connected ready to go. I want to see how many amps we can end up pulling through this. It's not going to be that many. This is just two. It's a 4S and a 3S battery, but I've got them connected so they will charge at uh, 3C. So I just started and I have a couple of batteries ready to go. I have a 3S and a 4S charging at 2C. These are 1300s each. So we're just going to put a little bit of a load on this and make sure it all connects up before we take the final step. Okay, there, they're both going at full load. It's not even close to stressing this power supply, at least it shouldn't be, but this was enough that it was tripping my old one. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now I can connect it and get these charged and be totally ready to fly. Should be able to put a lot harder load on it than this even. And with my other one, I have tried it connecting to the other ports and charging uh, a 4S on that at the same time. To just get as much load as I possibly could. But for now, I'm totally satisfied that this unit works successfully. Now, the last step, I don't like having these exposed connectors. Everything else is sealed up, but these are just totally exposed and 12 volts, you know what? It'd be very easy to accidentally drop something and short this out. So I don't wanna take any chances. I have some liquid electrical tape that I I just will coat on here. In the end, it will end up looking like this. There's no need for two colors, but I like it because that's how I am. I just cover over all the exposed connections. This is, I think, four coats of liquid electrical tape. So I'm not gonna do a whole series on just putting on the electrical tape, but it does say brush and cap, and this brush that it comes with, way too big. So I have some hobby grade brushes that I've used here. And all I do is glob it on, and I glob it on nice and thick. I'm not too terribly worried about aesthetics here and it will dry. I just want it covered. And I get make sure I get this screw terminal too because that is also totally exposed. So there we have it, an 800 watt power supply. I'll leave links down below with where you can currently get them. If you found this useful, give it a like, so that way maybe more people will see it and make this their choice for bench power supplies because I think this is as cheap and powerful as you can possibly get. I actually didn't even pay for these at all. Uh, at work, they had a couple spare servers they were gonna throw away because these were really old and I just snagged these out beforehand. So depending on where you work, you may check and they may just have a shelf of old ones they don't care about anymore. If you wanna see the option for a 24 volt power supply that you can connect these together, I can make one of those too. I don't need one right now, but I probably will eventually. So leave a comment down below and let me know if you want to to see that process in the same manner. And until next time, remember, with this you almost get... Ah!